I'm Sarah Gore, and this is Open House NYC. We're in Tribeca to tour a minimalist masterpiece. And architect David Freeland shows off a unique project nestled in an L.A. hillside. We visit a Charleston townhome that pays homage to the building's rich history. Plus, a penthouse stunner in Soho with multiple outdoor areas. But first, designer David Mann shows us around his own Eastside apartment. Knowing that I had to furnish this maybe more for my friends than for myself, the way I approached it was simply accumulating things that I truly love. Welcome to Open House NYC. Today I'm coming to you from this spectacular mansion on the Upper East Side, just steps from Central Park. Opulent is the key word with this place, and you get a sense of that opulence from the sidewalk with its classically inspired limestone facade. It continues as you enter into the reception gallery and through each of its six floors. The home is filled with a refined touch at every turn. Multiple formal and informal living spaces allow for grand entertaining, both inside and out on one of its many terraces. The full floor master suite is a regal ode to luxurious living. Oh, and did I mention the basement level? There you'll find a resort style fitness center decked out with both massage and steam rooms, a swimming pool, and a gym. There's even another entertainment area down there with a wet bar for year-round pool parties. It's just one of the many surprises that this approximately 13,000 square foot New York classic has to offer. We're getting started on the Far East Side with designer David Mann, founder and principal of MR Architecture and Decor. He takes us around his stylish and eclectic home overlooking the East River. See how he embraced the color black and curated an array of furnishings and objects that truly spoke to him. Check it out. Hi, my name is David Mann. I'm architect and founder of MR Architecture and Decor. Welcome to my home. A lot of people accuse me of liking empty spaces, and that's true, but knowing that I had to furnish this maybe more for my friends than for myself, I set about thinking about the decor. And the way I approached it was simply accumulating things that I truly love. The foyer opens out to this major living space, which is dining room and living room combined. I set up the living room and dining room to take best advantage of the long river views, which is the most important feature of this apartment. In the main seating area of the living room, I have two finjule sofas that are covered in the most impractical fabric known to man, which is silk velvet. In front of the chairs are two pieces of sculpture that are actually coffee tables as well. I love these pieces because they are real pieces of art, but they're useful. In the dining room, I started with a chandelier by Studio Drift, and it's called Fragile Future. And the reason it's called that is it's dandelions glued to LED bulbs. The dining table underneath the chandelier is something that I had made. I love the fact that the base is cylindrical and the top is completely square. Near the dining area, I have a rug on a wall, which may strike some people as funny, but I thought it was the perfect thing to put there. It's one of the few pieces of pattern that I've embraced. I love the texture, and since I don't have curtains, I'm always looking for soft things that I feel comfortable with to add to the arrangement here. The kitchen is black and white for the most part. I used brown cork on the floor. The other thing that was done here is that we removed all the upper cabinets. Removing those left the kitchen feeling much more open. And in this particular room, the black that's used on this wall is shiny as opposed to the white, which is matte on the other side. So behind the range in the kitchen is Moroccan tile, but again, it's all black, carrying on that theme of being very strict with the black and white rule. This is the master bedroom. In here, we carried the black and white theme, and one of the fun things about this room is that the wall to my left is all black, and the TV's in the middle of it, so at night, with no lights on, we're watching movies as though we're in a theater. Probably one of the most notable things about this room is that there's identical nightstands on either side of the bed, but one side is mine, which is fairly minimal, and the other one is my partner Fritz's, which is a cacophony of interesting objects. 
From this room, we also have a perfect Manhattan skyline view. On summation, I hope you've enjoyed seeing my home as much as I've enjoyed showing it to you, and I hope you'll come back in five years and see how it's completely changed. Thank you very much for coming. Coming up after the break, we head downtown to Soho for a look at a beautiful loft with unique design details. Welcome back to Open House NYC. Now we're at a designer duplex loft on one of Soho's most iconic streets. This penthouse is filled with sophisticated touches and bold color that make it a constant surprise. And it's ideal for indoor-outdoor entertaining on three different levels, including a roof terrace. Let's take a closer look at this nearly 2,000 square foot, four bedroom Soho Stunner. Hello, my name is Susan Wires of Stribling Associates. Welcome to 109 Green Street in the heart of Soho. 109 Green Street was first developed in 2005 as a petite full surface condominium. The facade is a modern interpretation of Soho's cast iron structures with the use of steel I-beams and riveted girders. Not only is this one of the most desirable blocks to live in in Soho and one of my favorites, but this designer penthouse was made for entertaining and includes four bedrooms and several outdoor spaces with sweeping city views. I just can't wait to show it to you. Upon entering through your own personal elevator, you are immediately embraced with sophistication and contemporary flair. The living space is a entertainer's dream and features high ceilings, a gas fireplace clad with ANSEX tile, custom built-ins, and a gorgeous chevron reclaimed oak floors. Anchoring the living space is this beautiful artisan chandelier. Adjacent is the dining area, which opens onto a chef's kitchen. But if you're looking to take the party outside, beyond the floor-to-ceiling glass doors, is a large landscape terrace equipped with a large gas fire pit, perfect for marshmallows, dining area for those al fresco nights, and multiple lounging spaces. But my favorite space in this apartment, if you want to have a nice break for some peace and quiet, is this fantastic master suite. This master suite has been outfitted with enormous custom closets and tasteful furniture style built-ins. You also have your very own secluded balcony where you can drink your morning coffee and take in the city views. The centerpiece of this ensuite bath is this enormous freestanding soaking tub under a solarium styled skylight. So if you'd like, you can bathe under the stars. This bathroom has been beautifully appointed with marble, a large glass shower, and a double sink vanity making it like your own personal spa. But if your two terraces aren't enough, you can venture up to your own private roof deck with inspiring panoramic views of the historic buildings of Soho. So I hope you've enjoyed taking a look at this gorgeous penthouse with impeccable style and views to match. Thank you for joining me. Coming up right after the break, we are in Charleston, South Carolina to check out a unique home personally designed by its owner. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Open House NYC. Now we're taking a special trip to Charleston, South Carolina for a look at a restored townhome designed by its owner, developer, and hotelier, John Dewberry. The historical home was completely reimagined to pay tribute to its past, incorporating many original details in its design. The result is a home that feels sophisticated but never precious, both inside and out. John takes us on a tour. Hi, I'm John Dewberry, a developer, preservationist, and welcome to my home here in Charleston, South Carolina. It's a pre-revolutionary home, first built in 1770. In about 2003, we decided that we would take the home back to 1770. Most everything was approved by myself before we actually put it in the home. So come on in and let's take a look. 
Right off the foyer to your left, what most people refer to as their living room, we refer to it as our music and art room. We have a Steinway piano that was signed by Van Cliburn, and then we have many art pieces here, some with color, but many charcoals because I like the minimalist value of those. When we bought the home, it had actually been a grocery store for over a hundred years. And people all over Charleston have these great stories about getting their first beer or stealing candy from Pete's. These were 14 foot floor to ceiling. So we raised the floor two feet here, had to change the windows and bring those up, went and got beveled glass from Germany and rebuilt all of the fireplaces, which was one of the toughest tasks. It gives a real strong nod to the era which this home is from. In a main dining room, we made it a little bit more casual. This table you can see is from Brazil and looks like it's been beat up because it's old. You can be comfortable having pizza on this dining room table or you can have caviar and champagne. I like a lot of presidents, but one of my favorite presidents is George Washington. And I have this unsigned Gilbert Stewart. And then of course, the two hunt boards on both sides of the room are actually both from the revolutionary area that this home was built, as is this French wallpaper that is from the 1770s as well. The kitchen house was the biggest preservation project of the entire house, which was an enormous one in and of itself. When I purchased the house, there was actually a second floor, an in-law suite. I decided I wanted to make this one big, enormous volume. If you look around, you'll see the different colors of stucco and brick. We did the same technology that they did back in the 1770s in terms of creating this tabby, which is Portland cement and oyster shell. You also see the hurricane rods. They're not just for show, as you'll see in some folks' house. These are actually holding these walls up. We like to use each room of the house, and we certainly get a great deal of use out of the kitchen. We like to sit here and read by the fireplace, have the coffee with the dogs. We also wanted to make the island a place where we could commune. So you can see we have a long row here of eight chairs, or you can head outside to our Meeting Street courtyard and dine al fresco. And speaking of al fresco, let's go see the main courtyard. One of the things really special about Charleston is our garden. We brought in bluestone, which is used throughout Charleston, but our lines are a little more linear. You can see our marble table here in the back. And of course, then we fluffed it up with beautiful landscaping. Okay, let's go back into the house and take a look at the second floor. Now we're in the Cypress room, really probably my personal favorite in the entire house. I spend a lot of time here reading, smoking an occasional cigar. The walls in here are from the pre-revolutionary era. We're not exactly sure how old, but probably 250 to 300 year old cypress wood. I elected to peel the paint off of the wall and get it a flecked look. You'll see a lot of juxtaposition in this room of old and new. Of course, the 13 star flag, as well as two 18th century leather chairs, juxtaposed against a modern sofa, a modern ottoman. We spend most every night here before retiring to the bedroom. And this is our bedroom. And one of the many influences is from the Caribbean. And so this bed here is from Jamaica. And these two chairs here are campaign chairs from Barbados. In this room, unlike the Cypress room, we actually kept the paint intact and went over it with an antique white. Through the French doors is our bathroom suite. We have a huge tub that I put in the middle of the room so I can lounge in there and open up the French doors and smoke a cigar. I was never formally trained, so I don't know what you're not supposed to do or supposed to do. So when the designer showed me two great 1950s Minx chairs, I said, those are going in my bathroom. In a city as old as Charleston, it is clear that preservation is tantamount. So thanks for stopping by and allowing us to share our preserved pre-revolutionary home. The great thing about that home is that you can feel its history at every turn. And come to think of it, you can say the same for Charleston. Has anything on today's show inspired you to change things up in your own home? Well, we've got you covered with curated decor on Amazon. Check it out at amazon.com slash shop slash open house TV. Coming up next, Hillside Living in LA with an architectural gem. Welcome back.
back to Open House NYC. Now we join architect David Freeland of the firm Freeland Buck at one of their newest projects, a home nestled into the hillside of the Mount Washington neighborhood in Los Angeles. This custom home epitomizes the ease of California living sat before some of LA's most stunning views. David shows us around. Hi, my name is David Freeland from Freeland Buck. I'm an architect and I designed this house, Stack House. The reason why we call it Stack House is because each room of the house gets its own cube. Those cubes stack up on top of each other in a kind of informal and casual way. The first thing you notice when you arrive at the house is that it's four stories in height. A design challenge for us was how to make this entry into the house an exciting one. The first pallet is concrete and moves up through the embedded portion of the site. The way we broke up the two sets of stairs was to add a guest room between the first and second level. As you come up the second flight of stairs, you arrive at a deck area that looks out to the north. It could be a dining patio, it could be a relaxation space. The first thing you notice when you enter the house is that the floor plan is organized into separate rooms. It's not a great room where everything's connected, and you'll notice curved walls. The curves begin to stitch them back together again and make it feel like a unified space. From the kitchen, the curved walls open up visual connections to other areas of the house. You can see through to the dining room. The windows on two sides let in ample California sunlight. It makes this a really rich and enjoyable room to hang out in. So when you're ready to kick back and lounge, you can head on over to the den. Smaller windows in this room, the lower light levels. It's cozy, it's warmer, and it's a different environment than other rooms in the house. The rear patio could be a place to put a barbecue, to have dinner, to enjoy the more natural setting of the hillside area that surrounds the house. In this outdoor space, we tried to use materials that were more natural, but also pops of color. So the hex tile that's on both the patio floor, but also turns up onto the foundation of the house, gives you a kind of enclosed feeling. You're in a room in nature. The side of the house is a kind of play on board and batten siding made with cement board. We created two alternating patterns to break down the house into smaller parts. So it's not one big single volume, but multiple, the kind of boxes that stack one on the next. When you're done enjoying the outdoor space, another half flight of stairs takes you up to the bedrooms in the home. There's three bedrooms at the fourth level. And now my favorite part of the house, the master suite. You enter the master bedroom through a curved wall. First thing you see are amazing expansive views out to the mountains. The door out to the balcony allows for the balcony to really feel like it's part of the room. It connects you to the mountains. It feels like you're floating up above the trees. You look back down on the four levels that you've come up, each one its own geometric shape, each one with its own character and its own relationship to nature. Thank you for joining me at Stack House, enjoying all the different levels, views, geometries. Catch you next time. Up next, we are in Tribeca at a loft you're not gonna wanna miss. Welcome back to Open House NYC. Now we're in Tribeca at the loft of executive and author Kevin Roberts. Kevin wanted a calm space, but also one that inspired him and his guests. See how he did it. Hi, I'm Kevin Roberts. We're in Tribeca, which I think is right at the heart of everything that's exciting in downtown New York. But then you come up here, and as soon as you open the door, you can feel the silence. You can feel the calm. So I'm sitting right now in the gallery, which is a terrific gathering place. So we really made it slightly more intimate and more usable. There's a big brown chair, which comes from the Austin Powers movie, and it's the chair of Dr. Evil. So that gets quite a few selfies put in there at all hours of the day. 
What's driven me in my career is constant disruption, innovation and creativity. So I thought, why bother with a kitchen, man? Let's create a space for people to come together and eat around this great table. So they walk around the apartment, they look, they feel inspired, and then boom, they sit down there and they want to talk. One of the things I like about great spaces is not knowing what's around the corner, not knowing what's next. So we deliberately built a staircase that twists and turns three times and you wonder where it's going to. Then you walk into this space, which is a work environment. Big plexiglass desk, staring right down Hudson Street, right down at life and vigor. And then that takes you out onto a terrific, terrific deck where we can get 20 to 50 people up there looking at the river looking at the rooftops and looking down at the streets of the best part of New York. I hope you got the feeling of how much I love this place. I loved it when I created it. I've loved living in it. It's been a real pleasure sharing it with you. Thanks for watching. Like what you see on the show? Well, be sure to subscribe to our channel. We have so many more beautiful homes to share. It's all about love. Share these homes, you know?